Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Just Create. I'm your host, Thomas Duran, and uh, founder and owner of TD Films. Super excited about this episode, guys. I got a lot of information to go into. We're going to go right head into it, and I'm going to introduce you to my next guest, who is, honestly, I've been trying to get this guy on for the longest time. It is a privilege and honor to have him. His name is Colby K. Colby K., what is going on, my man? What's up, dude? What is up? It's good dude, to see you, brother. You too, man. I, like Seriously, has been... Uh, since I started, actually, a lot of people don't know. Well, a lot of people, maybe they do know. And I did mention this in my first show. There's two reasons why I started this show. One was one was literally because of this guy that, that I worked with in the video production business. And then the other was because of you and what you did at the Meltdown of Desert from the last uh, from the last year's uh, conference that we that you put on that I attended to. That that motivated me to create something like this, and so uh, you're well, one of the reasons honored, that you're man. on here, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm honored, dude. I'm honored. That that means a lot, dude. So I want to kind of tell the tell the people how important uh, and who you are a little bit, and if for the people that may not know you, uh, which would be very surprising because it just doesn't seem like the case anymore these days. But uh, <laughs> so Kobe K, guys, he's he basically is an executive, best selling author, a film producer, keynote speaker. Uh, marketing and social media authority. Let me tell you something like this. This guy has spent over 15 years in corporate America as an executive running sales and marketing for companies such as IBM, Hewlett Packard, Microsoft, Dell, tons of others. Um, he has advised, built, and partnered with hundreds of startups that have generated millions of dollars in revenue over the past 10 years. And this is where I feel like this is also a huge thing. This is why I'm bringing him on because he really embodies everything about Just Create. He has advised leading experts such as the man behind the chicken soup for the soul books to the first shark on the hit show Shark Tank. He has appeared over 125 podcasts, radio, television broadcasts, and has been featured in the Entrepreneur Magazine. This guy has made over 10 million impressions in 36 months through using through social media. He has, affected, he has worked with over 2,000 business owners, and I'm one of them. So, <laughs> so but uh, man, I... I, you literally embodied everything of what this show is about. When I created this show, it's called Just Create. It takes an action. It allows us to be able to get a mindset on. And you really took that to heart or not my show, but like you did that yourself on your journey of documenting your journey from where you were at in your past life to where you're at right now. Tell me a little bit about like why, what got you motivated to just kind of go out there, record a bunch of videos and, and really talk about your life. Well, I think there's a there's a couple things, man. First off, I'm honored uh, and humbled for the chance to be on the show. If one person can grab something from today's episode, it's um, it's a huge benefit for me, right? It's it's just one it's it's worth every investment. It's just one person can take something from it. So, thank you for having me on the show. My pleasure. The the if you unpack the the nucleus, I guess you could say, or unpack that question. I've done now close to 4,000 videos in three years, right? And a big part of that was I, I started making skateboard videos in like the 90s and the 2000s uh, using an old VHS recorder, started doing graphic design like Illustrator. I've been doing that for 15 years. I've been painting and writing music for a long time. So that was the creative part has been part of who I am. But how that translated to video and what I've done was I left corporate America to start a, a software company. I got sued. And in that, you know, people that know my story, I mean, I lost almost, I lost everything. And I was sitting inside of my kitchen with my boxes of like everything behind me. And, you know, keep in mind, I grew up with a mattress on the floor. I didn't have a lot growing up. And, and here I was in this, you know, $700,000 home that we had built from the ground up from picking the tiles to the carpet, to the office furniture, to the paint, to, you know, two of my kids were born in that house. And, that's the only neighborhood in the schools they've ever known. And I had to rip everybody away from that. And I was in my kitchen and I thought, you know, I never really shared the successes I had. I never was a guy who bragged about the stuff I had. It's just not who I am. When you don't have a lot and you get stuff, it's like, it's not a flashy thing. It's like, I respect it. I'm humble to it. 
And I was sitting in the kitchen, man, and I picked up my phone. And it's, I usually have my phone sitting right here. I'm really like having anxious panic attacks. It's in the another room. So I pick up the phone. <laughs> I hit, I hit, the, I hit record. And I said, "Listen, like, you know, it's before Facebook Live. I was just doing a, a Facebook video and said, hey, this is, uh, this is what it's like to, to run a business. This is what it's like to risk it all. This is what it's like to be a full time problem solver. And I don't know what I'm going to do. My wife's going to, you know, my wife's at my in-laws. I, everything I've got some boxes behind me that lights and power are off tomorrow. And I, I know one thing is he, the adversity is when your journey starts and I'm about to face another journey. And I don't know where that's going to take me and what's going to go, well, what's going to happen. But if you come along for that journey, I promise I'll build my way out. One thing you can't do is kill me and I'll take all the experience I have and I'll build a new business and I'll share everything I'm doing with you along the way, the good, the bad, the ugly. And I hit record and then sent it. And, you know, he, here we are, man, you know, 3,000 videos, 39 <laughs> or 3,999 videos later and three years later, you know, I've, I've just been consistent on putting out content. Yeah. And you actually, there was a, there was an equation that you talked about being consistent mm-hmm. in content. There's an equation that you put together that has really actually has been something I'm really been trying to follow myself of creating my own content, not just other people's content, but my own content. And uh, so tell me a little bit about tell, tell, tell everyone a little bit about what that equation is. So a big a big piece in all of this, right, is not just putting out content for the sake of putting out content. As a as a personal brand and a business brand, we have more opportunity than ever to share a story, a message and relate to an audience. I, don't, I no longer need a huge film production crew. I don't need to spend three thousand, you know, thirty thousand dollars a weekend to film a show. I can do it myself. For me, what I found was it wasn't just filming for the sake of filming. For me, what it came down to was first creating good quality content. If you notice the stuff that I put out, I kind of stay in my lane. I talk about some of the business fundamentals. I talk about marketing fundamentals. I talk about systems and tools. I talk about um, on the stuff I've done on social media because I've, I've been you know so persistent and active there. I don't go outside of that. I'm talking about politics. I don't, I, I don't talk about things that are topical. I stay in my lane. That doesn't mean I don't have a take. I just, I'm not an expert. I'm not an authority in those spaces. So I stay in my lane. So for me, it's about having good quality content on things I know about. Second piece is consistency. The, the experts, I say, and the experts mm-hmm. will say you need to be showing up at least five to six times a day across the five major platforms in order to cut through the noise and stay relevant. Meaning I got to be putting out five pieces of content on, let's say, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube every day. So if you look at that, that's a lot of content. So how do you do that without, be, you know, without being overwhelmed? And then the last piece is value. So quality content, having a good, solid message, speaking on things you know and you do and you practice and you can help others with. Consistency, showing up every single day. And we can talk about how I chop stuff up and how your audience can do some of the same things so it's not overwhelming and how to get to 4,000 videos, right? Right. Um, So you're having quality content, consistently showing up on the platforms. I fish where the fish are. I go where my audience is and I stay engaged. And then the last piece equals value. So quality content plus consistency equals value. Value is a qu- has its V with a question mark on it for the fact of value. If you're going after this and creating content just to make money, you're going to, you, you might find some success, but you're not long term. I'm in this for the long game, dude, right? It's like, you don't put out this much content and just hope that it sticks. It's like, I'm doing it because I want, you know, I want my kids to be able to come back and see what their dad did. Yeah. Uh, it value establishes is- a legacy. It is. So value is relationships like ours. We met through doing stuff like this. I met Joe. Joe introduced me to you. Like that all happened through social and through videos. Um, Value is relationships. Value is branding opportunities. Value is partnerships. Value is relationships. Value is in revenue streams. Value is a a part of the equation that's hard to quantify because you just have to show up providing good quality content every day. Yeah. And and, and honestly, that's what you do. You go out there, you give out... uh, Honestly, I would if if you're not following him, I would follow him now. Uh, you can find him on Facebook with Colby K. You can find him on uh, I Instagram. Uh, was it I am Colby K? Yeah, uh, Instagram. I, it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'm Colby K. And if you search the Healthy Primate on YouTube, you can find me there. It's like four or five hundred videos there. And then LinkedIn is Colby. You can find me there too. Yeah. No. <laughs> I, <laughs> Yeah, but honestly, follow him because there he puts out you put out content that honestly a lot of people are, are do it to try to get paid off of it, right? People pay 
for the for the for the stuff that you talk about that you just go out on Facebook on live or through your vlogs or through through, uh, you know, those different platforms that you use for your videos. Um, I mean, it's amazing that the amount of of uh, your YouTube channel has tons of information about how to use your or how to basically build a business and yep. and how to use video in your business. And so that's why I also want to brought you on, because you are doing some amazing things right now. And and what the other part of the show is, is that how to use video for your business, why you use video business, how do you use it? What do you use? Where do you go? How do you distribute that? And uh, and you're really just killing it right now um and taking a really a massive step to help out the speakers the the single entrepreneurs people that build out curriculums um and incorporating not only building that video platform but also learn how to distribute it so i kind of i'm so glad you're on the show because so many people need to hear like first of all why the one of the biggest questions why do we do video for your business i mean it's a loaded question but i mean i I could give you all the stats in the world, but tell me a little bit about why we do video for business. 89% of all content consumed on the internet in 2018, at the end of 2018 will be video. That's how people consume. That's how people consume content. My the flip side that you really, really need to be looking at is when we talk about repurposing content is audio. The, the pendulum swung heavy into video and now you see it going into audio. You know, there's um I've, there's been numerous times where you know, I've been on stage or been around people and said, you know, did you hear about me through video? Did you hear about me through Facebook? Did you hear about me through podcasting? And it's like, well, how many people didn't listen to podcasts that listen to podcasts today? Yeah. It's just enormous the amount of content we consume through video and audio. So if you're not building it, like it's, um, I start, I started really strong with video. I started with, with audio, then I went to video, then I dual purpose and do both. It's just a way for your audience to connect. You can have a, people see you. To build a relationship it's not just the written word and we you know how i don't know what the final stats are but the amount of people that are visual learners is it well supersedes anything else so it's just a way for people to connect and it really um, you could get authenticity through video very fast you know people are full of shit or if they're real and that you can't get that through just the written word sometimes right exactly exactly well you can't get that through text you can't get that through just nope. trying to read uh a profile or anything like that. It's, yeah. Like a blog like, post. Yeah. Like it's hard. Cause I can cut and paste that and doctor it. You don't know. It's yeah. when you see somebody on video talking about what they do it's for real. and how they do it. It's for real. I mean, everything from the juicing shows I do with my son, I built a supplement where I took two years and like made my, was a human Guinea pig testing out what's you know, the, the chemical in your body that could produce a stress or the hormones called cortisol. I did 132 different supplements and variations and documented the entire thing of me getting my blood done every 30 days. It's like, I just took people on that journey. It's like, I can write it. I wrote about it, but it's like, you know, to see it, 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 um, it adds more credibility and people connect to you more. You do have an insanity to you. You do have an insanity to you. And I love it. I love it, man. Yeah, it's, like, yeah, it's like, if I could just take a percentage of that, like I, 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 I always would just wonder where I would be right now. <laughs> like, like no matter how much I, no matter how hard I try to like try to put out different kind of like, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm going, I'm pushing hard. And then I see you and I'm like, damn, He's like doubling me right now. It's ridiculous. It's, it's just well, ridiculous. It's one of those things, dude. Like I surround myself with people that continue to push me. You know, yeah. I, I surround myself. I surround myself with people that continue to set the bar and push it. And I, I, I try not to get complacent. Um, I got a, I had a really big change on my, the way I, I just leveled some stuff up every six months or so. I try to level up again. I need to do it more, but I try to level up every six months. And I went hard again on the podcast. I went hard on Instagram. My Instagram followers went from like four grand to nine grand in like three months. Like yeah. just, just hammered it. So it's um it's quality content plus consistency. I've got four forty two hundred Instagram posts. I've been posting on Instagram dude for four years. Like, go here, go look at that. Like, it's not, it's not new to me. It's like we have. I didn't just start doing it. The thing is, you have to start. You can't make, look at it and say, you know, what do I do? You just have to start doing it. Exactly, and that's why I kind of that's that's the whole point of the show. It's just just create, just go do it. And you kind of brought up a really good point. Why are people not doing it? Or like, what what are people scared about getting on video? What kind of responses did you get from that? And what did you tell those people? Dude, I had a probably, um, I did a face, thank you for bringing that up. I did a Facebook post maybe a week ago and I just asked, you know, why are you not doing more video? Is it? I think simple three, question. Three, yeah, three or 400 people responded on it. You can kind of put the responses into one of three buckets. Uh, Smart ass answers. That was first. <laughs> Two, 
the serious part was fear. <laughs> like I'm afraid. Uh, next one was acceptance. Like I'm afraid of acceptance. What will people say? And then the third or the, the fourth really big one was audience. Like, you know, do I have something to say? Will people actually listen to me? So fear, do, what do I say? And will people listen? Those are the biggest ones. Um, those are all excuses, man. It's um, you just got to do it. It's, here's the thing is there's not, there's never been a better time for you to get your voice heard. And I put it to you this way, you specifically, Thomas, you have had a series of life experiences that only you have had as of your viewers or listeners, you've had, you've done something, you've been through something, you've been through some major adversity, you've built something, you have a knowledge of something that I don't have that somebody else doesn't have. But here's what they do is you owe it to you owe it to the universe to be able to share some of that because there's somebody on the other side of that that's going through what you've already survived and is trying to figure out how to get through it. Whether that's start a film studio, whether that's get through a divorce, whether that's starting a business, whether that's losing weight. It's like everybody's gone is going through something that you've already gone through or they're about to go through it. You owe it to the world to share that story. And there's never been a better opportunity than now to like do that. That. That was one of the most powerful statements there, and I completely agree with you. And that is, that's something that I think everyone needs to take to heart. And because we, you, everyone wants to be somewhat connected. Everyone wants to. It, it, they're you're right. There, we have to stop looking as as. And I think where a lot of people get fear of is that no one wants to hear me. No, we are obligated. You're obligated to to share your story because it's going to help out one other person like you mentioned before right when you right when you start this i just want this to help out one other person and that's yeah. how you're going through everything that you do everything that you i mean even when you help me out you're like what can i do to help you and it's like well, what can i do to help you like i, I i've never been asked that you know and, it, and, yeah. it, and it's one of those things it's like what a what a total completely different perspective about how to be involved, how to establish a legacy, how to get other people involved. And, and you just establish those, those relationships. It's just, it, it's absolutely mind blowing. And, and, and like I said, this is the, you're literally everything embodied for what this show is all about. And so, um, I appreciate but, that, man. Uh, so a couple of things, and I know you have to get going. I know you got busy. I want to bring you back on this show again, cause there's a lot more that we want to get into. But, uh, um, one other thing is, is when it comes to doing video and, and you've done on both ends of spectrums, you've invested in money in a video, you know, I, I mean, you hired my company before and, and you, so you put your money and then you also do your own video. Where do you see, how, how do you explain to people or how do you help out people to understand like when it is good to invest in their video when they're, you know, for that and what kind of video content they want to invest in versus the video content that they could do on their own? Like, you know, you know, like, how do they take that next step? How do they, how do they know what to invest? What's the worth of this on the investment? That type of thing. That's a good question, dude. Let me, um, let me answer it this way. People, this is visual, right? We're going to do video. People are going to see this. Yeah. All right. All right. Hold on one second. Can you hear me? Oh yeah. Oh, I just unplugged my, my good mic. Uh, a couple things we're going to go on. I'm going to take on a field trip live on, on the interview. Look so that. that's what we do right uh, here. A couple things. First off, the biggest thing is uh, I, want to, I want to make sure everything that I do, especially if we've got time, I want to give tactical advice that somebody can use. I don't want to talk about theory. So stuff we can do as soon as the show's done, take some notes. As soon as the show's done, go do it. Like yes. I don't want to talk about, oh, great, this is awesome, yeah. and uh, this is some cool shit. It's like I want you to be able to go, okay, cool, I can go do that now. Um, the, there's a couple things. Let's talk about um, – why people don't do video. I'm afraid I have nothing to say. The audience isn't going to be receptive. Okay, get that out of your mind. Whatever skill set you have, whatever you like to do, and whatever you're fairly good at, write that stuff down and pick one of those things you want to start to talk about every day. Right? I'm going to give you a seven day challenge of just doing videos. One video a day, three to five minutes. You don't need to go longer. Do it on your flavor of choice. Do Instagram Live, do Facebook Live, do Twitch, do YouTube. Do, I don't care, Facebook, wherever, wherever you show up. It's one five minute video, three to five minute video every single day. But what you like, what you love, what you got some talent on, make a list, pick one thing. After seven days, then go to 30. After 30, then go to 60. After 60, then go to 90, and then just don't look back. Okay? And it goes something like this. You just pick up the camera, write it down so you have a little bit of reference to what you're going to talk about. Because the biggest fear is as soon as you hit record and go live, 
you're going to freak out and think that there's a thousand, a hundred million people watching, a thousand people watching. And really, there's nobody's going to watch you. Your mom, your neighbors, like you get people that, that one, know you. you. get the one line. Nobody's going to watch you and nobody yeah. cares. Like, don't worry about it. Get over it. Get over the fear. Start talking. You're going to fumble. It's going to be awful. And it's going to be great because you started doing something. Start talking about something you're very passionate about. Is it the political landscape? Is it... Um, how to how to shoot a three pointer? Is it how to um, I I make I'm a, I'm in um, I'm in the clothing business. I make my own pocket scarves. Like I don't know, like whatever you love to do, pick out whatever that is and start talking about it. What's going to happen is you start to do that after seven days and you get into fourteen days. People around you are going to say you're an idiot. Stop doing that. Why are you doing this? This is ridiculous. You're so stupid. Don't do this. This is dumb. And then you're going to stop because you give a shit about what other people think. Those people are putting their limitations on your creative outputs. Never let that happen. They're afraid that they've never done it and want to pull you down. It's usually a spouse, a neighbor, yes. a husband, like a best friend, a mom, a dad. It's always Screw the closest them. people. It's to always you. the closest, it's people, always to the closest people to you. It, it, it is. It's like when you go to, it's, it's like if you go join a gym and your spouse does not, it's going to cause friction. Yes. You got to bring people, if the people you love, bring them with you. The people that don't matter, let them run because what's going to happen is come day 30, day 45, day 55, day 60, day 90, you're going to have a whole turnover of the people that were close to you. And all of a sudden you're going to start to bring in people that are very interested in the stuff you're interested in. Now I can have a very wider impact and you're going to be saying stuff that people are afraid to say. That's when you start to share your voice. As that starts to build and you're not doing it to make money, you're doing it to share your voice. The quality is going to get better. The engagement is going to get better. And you're going to want to separate yourself from what the rest of the people are doing. That's when you make investments. That's when you bring in a guy like Thomas. That's when you bring in a crew of people to help you bring in $100,000 with the camera gear to take your vision to life. That's when you bring is when you really want to differentiate. You want to be looked at as a professional. But along the way, videos on my phone like work every single day yeah. I'm, you know i'm a uh, i'm a little bit of a different beast i'm a designer i'm a developer i'm a filmmaker so i have to step out of my own way to bring in experts because i do a lot of it myself i'm not the normal i'm not i love it i love to create i get down into i want to know like i'm using old film it's like i, I just yeah. love the whole process where most people don't don't get don't get scared just start doing it and when you start to scale and you start to get involvement when you want to separate yourself and look professional on a specific series of things you're talking about, bring in a crew or hire somebody to help you understand what cameras do I need to buy? If I'm doing a vlog, start following Casey Neistat. He has a hundred videos yep. on all the gear he buys for his studio, right? Then yeah. it's, who does my post-production? I hire a guy like Thomas's firm to do the post-production. Just start doing it. And as you start to graduate, you'll see, a, um, you'll see an influx. I don't know what's going on in here, but as you start to get to the influx about using your phone, after you start using your phone and you start figuring out, hey, uh, I want to get into something bigger. Uh, right now we Going are for a trip. You're carrying all yeah. of us. How does that feel? How, yeah. How, how's that? Look at that. <laughs> Good. I got nothing but love, man. I got strength. This is our office. We're at uh, Quadmark Studios slash Meat Cleaver. Love it. We, call it. we call it Meat Cleaver because I work at a creative agency here in, in Chandler. It's called Meat Cleaver. The building's 120 years old. It was an old slaughterhouse. I love it. And, um, we kept it the theme. So the, um, the, the back area we call meat cleaver, because you'll see here, oh, there's nobody in here, we'll see. Uh, but we start to talk about using a production studio for the stuff that you do. Yes, sir. There so there's, the, uh, there's the, the things that hang the meat, hence the name Meat Cleaver Studios. What's up, fellas? Hey, what's up going on, guys? <laughs> guys are running a studio. Yeah. That's who makes the magic know? happen. But then you come into a place like this. Look at that. Right. So it's, I mean, this is a full production studio where we're doing online training, virtual training. It's a virtual training class. The set changes out every couple of weeks. We've got green screens. Um, I don't see the TriCaster. Is it back there? The tri we have a TriCaster that you'd see in like the traditional news setups. It's taking a nap. I see it sleeping all the way to you know, just the video production stuff. So where you'd come into the studio, you do that once your, once your quality and once your consistency is really starting to take off and you want to start to offer things to monetize or you really just want to step your production up because your response rate is so high. That's when you'd bring in somebody like Thomas and schedule some time or come down to a studio like here and get your stuff doing. That's right, dude. That is, that is fantastic. And as we leave off here, like I said, I would love to bring you back on again at another time because there's yeah, just so much. I mean, dude, you, you, just, you just kill it. But um, – Tell me a little bit about, we have an event coming up or you have an event. Can we, like I said, yeah, we, you're, yeah. you're, dude, you're, I was going to ask you, you come in the phone, but sizzle yeah, reel. Or yeah. Well, yeah okay, well, we, there you go. Boom. You're going to be there. <laughs> you're going to be there. You're not speaking yeah. out of turn. The, yeah. um, 
The uh, event's called Meltdown in the Desert. The focus is on entrepreneurs, small business, media business, people that are in branding, people that want to build a personal brand, people that want to leverage social media. On the outside, that's what I tell you it is. And um, once you get inside, it's nothing You'll, like that. Yeah. It's like if you've got Gary Vaynerchuk and Tony Robbins and put them together, shook up the room, that's kind of what the meltdown is. It's um, three to 400 people that are just like you that are trying to figure it out yeah, and so trying to figure out how to kind of level up. And we tear you apart at the very base of how you show up every day, what your routines are, and you show people that are have gone through major adversities how they've overcome those adversities to build their brands, their businesses, and, and impact hundreds of millions of people. It, it, it's it, it's one. Okay, I've been to several events, um, numerous events, filmed a bunch of numerous events. Meltdown in the Desert is by far the one that has made the impact that oh, other event has ever done before. And so the the amount the, the the crew or the the cast that you put together of the speakers that you put together is bar none the most high quality speakers you'll ever ever come across in one event. It is absolutely ridiculous. Um, like I said, it changed my course of my life a little bit when it comes to what I'm doing now. It, it challenged me to create something like this, this show um, from last and I'm from last year. And this year, I'm just looking forward to just establishing new relationships. Man, this is going to be off the hook. It's going to be amazing. So um, well, let's just talk about some of the speakers. We've got yeah. Dan, Dan Clark, the guy who co-wrote the Chicken Soup for the Soul. He's spoke to over 9 million people. He's one of the foremost authorities on public speaking. He is, he's the executive coach for speaking. He's coached everybody. If you've seen Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's TED Talk, he wrote that. The guy is just a monster. He did all the Chicken Soup for the Soul stories. If you read the stories in the book series, that's him. Uh, we, we added Sharon Lecter. Uh, Sharon Lecter is the number one authority, written authority on financial literacy, meaning she did Rich Dad, Poor Dad. She did Think and Grow Rich. Oh, wow. She, uh, she's the, uh, a part of that. She was the Robert Kawasaki's yes. co-writer, and then she picked up the legacy um, for the Think and Grow Rich series. Between the two of them, they've sold over 300 million books. They're just amazing. And then you go down to Nava Lee Rekla, who you saw her last year. I met her in the hallway. Like Beautiful just girl. said, thanks. Yeah, like eight year old girl Jeez. who started doing Unreal. businesses when she was two. Uh, we shared the stage. You were there. Yeah. We shared the stage together at um at the, at Deca, the Deca conference. Like yeah. spoke in front of you know two three thousand kids. It's like she was there. She's going to talk about the stuff that she's doing. Our buddy Sean Whalen's back doing a workshop with me. We've got um who else do we have? We have Ryan Stuman. We've got. Uh, uh, you got like you got a list there. Yeah, we got well, no, you, um, Tyler Harris. Tyler Harris, my boy. Uh, Tyler Harris yeah. is coming. Um, I mean, we've got just such a. Dude, let me do this because I I should know this because we've just added a bunch of stuff and a bunch of people. But when you look at the event, if you go to meltdownevent.com, that's where you can actually get all the details for the event. But Dan Clark, Sharon Lecter, Ryan Stuman, myself, Keith Yaki, uh, Yaki, who is the uh, yeah. founder of a thing called Amplify Live, just a stud. He used to be a pastor, runs things in uh, Las Vegas. Jesse Elder, uh, I don't know what universe Jesse Elder's from. He's uh, a time <laughs> traveler. Uh, you look at him and you don't like, when he talks to you, you're like, dude, where, I feel like I'm like being transported to another dimension. Uh, Nava Lee, Ter Tyler Harris, who he himself has hit over 20 million impressions on social media in the last two years. He does more, like that dude is the one who pushed me to up my, my production game. Cause he's a, He's got a full-time crew around him like Gary Vaynerchuk has yeah, he does. doing his stuff. And he's a number, he's one of the top life insurance policy salesmen in the US. But he doesn't, I mean, he's doing so much stuff. You got Scott Duffy, Dom Fawcett, um, who spoke last year. Dom. Cody, yeah, man. Cody, Dom Cody, is, yeah, Dom is such a bomb. Such your Cody, ass on fire, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're not gonna be like he's just a, a beast. Cody Jefferson, Dr. Karen Osborne's back, um, Ketan McQuana's coming. Okay. You got some special guests. And then the theme is legacy doing something very special this year where we're doing highlights of people that embody legacy. Uh, if you've ever seen Dixon, D-I-X-X-O-N, flannel, if you've ever seen flannels, like really, really good flannels, he's built his whole brand on Instagram, built a seven-figure business on Instagram. His name's Danny Dreyer. So Danny will be on stage. We're going to be talking about legacy and what he did on Instagram to build a, a seven-figure lifestyle business. Nate Wessel. Nate Wessel is the guy who builds all of the ramps for the X Games and Red Bull. Um, he's right-hand guys with Travis Pastrana. So any crazy ramp that's ever been built, the guy's just a wizard. Uh, we went, had a motorcycle ride together and went from Texas to uh, right. 
Vegas with him and some team. So he's coming out. And then Hank Robinson. Hank Robinson was a highly decorated combat veteran that um, after the service was struggling with PTSD and got into engraving, engraved his whole platoon that um, was lost in battle on the side of a truck. And it won like all these crazy awards and he's just never looked back. His creative outlet is engraving. So Hank will be there. We're going to talk about stuff he's doing. Our buddy, Sean Whalen, he's a best-selling author. sold I think 56,000 books of his new book um, called how to get shit done. He's going to be doing a two hour workshop. That's a mini kind of a condensed version of his uh, one day retreat called the lion's den uh, and super powerful stuff. And then I'm going to be there talking about what I, I call digital distribution. Um, and if, I can probably stay a little bit longer if you want. I can tell you kind of tell your audience what that is and how to create 4,000 videos. Yeah, I would, I would love that. I would love that. I would love that. If you could but that's the event, man. There's a lot to it. It's, it. it's just a really, the networking opportunity alone, it's a couple hundred bucks for a ticket. The All the ticket sales, after we cover the cost of the event, um, we donate a big portion of that back to a charity. This year, it's Tomahawk Charitable Solutions that supports fallen men and women in battle and their families as well as first responders. So it's just a good, the overall event, you know how it is, man. From the minute we start to the minute we end, it's nothing but tears and smiles and hugs and handshakes. It's intense. It's intense. And, uh, yep. you know, for not being a, like a spiritual type thing, it's a very, like, it's almost a spiritual. It it's heavy. It's heavy, it's a, man. It is. It's it, like, it, I it wish is. you could tell people it's a spiritual experience. Yeah, they, wouldn't a, they wouldn't They wouldn't come. Exactly. They wouldn't understand. They, would they would think it's like people praying over you, but it's not. No. It's just, no. it's just, no. a, it, it's, it, it's emotionally, it's like a boot camp for your emotions, man. It is, it is. If you want to know how to level up your, your life period across your personal life and your business life and your relationships and what you're doing period, and then know how to go do it. That's what this conference is. Yes. 100%. Now you say a little bit about the digital distribution. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So talk about that. One of the things that, okay, so you want to create some content, right? You, we're going to do the seven day challenge with your audience. Are you going to do seven days every day? You do a video two to three minutes or three to five minutes every day for seven days. That list of things you wrote down, of things you like to do or that you've got a talent in or a skill or a take on, when you take that one video, it's how do you take one asset and then really start to slice it up? And for me, it's if I have to show up on five platforms every day, multiple times a day, five platforms, five times a day, how do I stay away? How do I get work done? Because it feels like a lot, it's overwhelming. It's a job well, in itself. It, really it is. is. We're gonna take, you're gonna take that one video that you film Inside of that one video, you're going to be able to make either slice that into one to two videos because you're going to be able to get some highlights out of it. If you're on a Mac, you can use iMovie. If you're on a PC, there are a ton of free uh, video editing programs you can get. Find some YouTube videos, learn how to just shrink the video down and put a little intro, a little outro, put your, your handle on it. So you take one video, make that one or two videos, depending on 60 second videos. I'll tell you what we're going to do with all this is what it leads into. You're going to send that video to a website called rev.com, R-E-V.com. What Rev's going to do is they're going to transcribe your video into text. Inside of that, it's 99% accurate. It's a dollar a minute. I have no association with them. They just kick ass. They'll give you a Word document back, broken up into sections as to how you were speaking. You need to do some basic editing and move some stuff around, but it's, it's really, really quick, and it's pretty correct. So now you're going to have a written document of your video. Now, as I move down the stack, in whatever free video software you use, I can split my video and my audio out. You're going to save your audio as its own file, whether it's one to two because of how long the video is or if it's just one five or seven minute audio track, you save the audio out. At the end of that, you have this Word document of all the stuff you said. Inherently, when you talk for five to seven minutes, you're going to have five to seven things that were very inspiring or something you said that was was cool, right? you're going to create Instagram quote cards. You can go online and find any kind of free application on your phone, whether you're using Android or, or Apple, find a free application that does word over text over image is the, the search phrase text over image. And you're going to create yourself some Instagram, what are called quote cards. You've seen them. They're inspirational memes with a, like, you know, some kind of mountain set, a guy in a mountain and it's like help others and you will be helped. Right? Like whatever. It's just a motivational saying. <laughs> yeah. So in this, what we've done now is I've got one master video where now I've got one or two small videos. I've got the long form text. I've got five to seven quote cards and I've got the audio split out. Now I look at social media distribution to say, where do I need to go? Well, I can go to Facebook with a long form post. I could take the text post of that without the video 
and I can make that a, a long form post just like I would a blog. So I have Facebook and I have a blog post now. Boom. I take the audio, I slice it out. I can go to Anchor. I can go to SoundCloud. I can go to whatever and build out a podcast based on your audio now. So once a week, you can start putting out audio content, start a podcast. The next piece, I start using those little quote cards. I go to Instagram. I go to Twitter. I, I write that same quote. I write a little bit more in context, bust up the hashtags, and then boom, we're off and moving. Then as we start to go through that, you can clearly see how that one piece of content now became 10 to 15 pieces of content. If you do that every single week, if you're doing videos every day, you got a bunch of content. But if you do that once a week to once every other day, that's your catalog for the whole week. But that is how you essentially, we call that digital distribution. You can use that long form text for a blog. You can use that long form text for a website you're building. You can build that long form text for an email list you start. You can do podcasts. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of stuff you can do based on what you want to distribute. But now you, you've taken one five to seven minute asset and created a ton of other assets. Yeah, and that is the definition of repurposing content <laughs> that yeah. is that is absolutely well, that, that's how you scale right there, there. Right? So when you see me everywhere it's um it, it, it's one of those things where that's how i'm doing it that's how i'm able to do it right yeah and then and that's how it needs to be done because i mean just creating this show takes me eight hours to put you know to edit post and and, and put it together so i mean i can't imagine the amount of content that is absolutely needed like you mentioned yep to be able to do that and so it's to continue to do that on a daily basis. It's, it's nearly impossible. The way that you're saying it is like, Oh, that makes a lot of sense. It's doable. Yep. There's absolutely no reason not well, to do And you, there's almost all of those tools have scheduling tools now too. So yeah. if you set up a Facebook page instead of your Facebook profile, you can schedule all those posts out. Um, there are third party softwares you can use like sprout social, uh, mm -hmm. Hootsuite's free. You can use Hootsuite to schedule your posts. So get them all, you do your one video, slice it all up and then go into a tool like Hootsuite and schedule it. Now you're not doing it every single day. You can manage it and still do your organic posts, which I highly recommend, but it's, um, you know, how to use social media can be its own. We can do our own thing on it, but yeah, yeah. That, that's how you really start to scale and take one piece of content. And keep in mind the way I consume something on Pinterest is not the same way I consume things on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. It's a completely different so platform. You, up, you know, and, and I'm a victim of this or I'm not a victim. I'm, I'm, um, I, I'm guilty of this where sometimes I'll spread pieces, but most of the time what I'm trying to do is across platforms, I'm trying to write content that's applicable to that platform and how people consume content on those platforms. I love it, man. I absolutely love it. You are the best. You freaking rock it. Healthyprimates.com. Is that where we call, call, call No, just go to any, just, any handle social. Go to I'm Colby K. I am Colby K. That's right. Uh, the backwards. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm K-O-L-B-Y-K-A-Y. -E you are the man. And uh, like I said, we got to do this again. Great information. Exciting stuff. Follow him. Hey, guys, that's it. That's a wrap for today. You come and join us for the next episode and see what else we got in store for you. But once again, just remember, just go just create. Go do it. No excuses. And just get creative. Have fun. All right, guys. See you guys later.